Praise the Lord. Let's stand to our feet this morning. It is resurrection day. Hallelujah. We serve a God that is not dead. He is alive and He is on the inside this morning. We are grateful this morning, Father. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's begin to just worship Him right now for all that Jesus has done. His grace was free. Hallelujah. But it cost Him His life that gave you something that you could never acquire for yourself. Let's just begin to lift our voices, clap our hands, and have some shouts of joy this morning. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout if you believe he's alive today. He's alive today. He's alive. He's alive forevermore. And he intercedes for you and I. Come on, give him some glory. Come on, don't let the rocks be have to cry out today. You cry out to God and give him praise. Hallelujah.
Till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, and the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By His blood and in His name, in His freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings, praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath, till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe, for the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame, now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint, by His blood and in His name, in His freedom I am free, for the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me.
see, my brain has not yet reached the point where it could form a thought that could adequately describe the greatness of my God. And my lungs have not yet developed the ability to release a breath with enough agility to breathe out the greatness of His love. And my voice, you see, my voice is so inhibited, restrained by human limits, that it's hard to even send the praise up. You see, if there are words for him, then I don't have them. My God, his grace is remarkable. Mercies are innumerable. Strength is impenetrable. He is honorable, accountable, favorable. He's unsearchable, yet knowable, indefinable, yet approachable, indescribable, yet personal. He is beyond comprehension, further than imagination, constant through generations, king of every nation. But if there are words for him, then I don't have them. You see, my words are few, and in trying to capture the one true God, using my vocabulary would never do, but I use words as an expression, an expression of worship to a Savior, a Savior who is both worth, worthy and deserving of my praise. So I use words. My heart extols the Lord, blesses His name forever. He has won my heart, captured my mind, and has bound them both together. He has defeated me in my rebellion, conquered me in my sin, he has welcomed me into his presence, completely invited me in. He has made himself the object of my sight, flooding me with mercies in the morning, drowning me with grace in the night. But if there are words for him, then I don't have them. But what I do have is good news, for my God knew that man-made words would never do. The words are just, these words are just tools that we use to point to the truth. So he sent his son, Jesus Christ, as the word, living proof. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of creation. For by him all things were created, giving nothing formation. And by his word he sustains in the power of his name. For he is before all things and over all things he reigns. Holy is his name. So praise him for his life, the way he persevered in strife, the humble son of God becoming the perfect sacrifice. Praise him for the, his death, that he willingly stood in our place, that he lovingly endured the grave, that he battled our enemy, and the third day rose in victory. He is everything that was was promised. Praise him as the risen king. Lift your voice and sing for one day he will return for us and he will finally be, you, we will finally be united with our Savior for eternity. Eternity. So it's not just words that I proclaim for my words point to the word and the word has a name. Hope has a name. Joy has a name. Peace has a name. Love has a name, and that name is Jesus Christ. Praise his name forever.
Jesus this morning. He is worthy, my friend. standing in a posture of worship or if you either stand or, <clears throat> or if you sit and with the deacons come forward please to the table of the Lord this is Resurrection Sunday and may it forever begin this day reminding you of all that Jesus did for you and me and for the whole world you know atop Mount Calvary Golgotha's Hill he did for you what you would never be able to do in your own strength. He bought and paid for you and the whole sin of the world and took the law of sin and death that condemned you even though it was perfect it revealed to you and I the holiness of a holy God. The God of love. The God of acceptance and the God of grace loves you with a compassion that's not willing that any would be lost. And Jesus said, Father, I'll go. Send me, I'll do it. So God poured Himself in a human body so that He could feel the pain and suffering and the sin of His creation even though He was the perfect Lamb of God that never sinned. Yet, on Golgotha's hill, as a cross and three nails held Him, 
He said, it's finished. It's finished, Father. And, and I commit my spirit unto you. It is finished when he said it is finished. It meant a new era would begin. The old for the new. And now that God would live inside of imperfect man, that to all that received him would become his perfectness. His image that would be made holy, acceptable, children of the Most High God. Because God's grace was poured out when God's judgment was poured out upon His only Son so that you and I would become His children, many sons and daughters of God. You know, the Lord's table is for everyone. Jesus is calling everyone to His table to remember. To remember when the enemy comes in like a flood to accuse you of what you're not. Remember me, the Lord says. When you're going through a trial and a tribulation in this life, remember me. When something has crushed you or disappointed you or broken your heart, Jesus said, remember me. Stand in me and remember my blood and my body was given for you because I have overcome. You are overcomers. <laughs> Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. I want you to get a picture of the Lord of glory. That bore your every sin of your past, present, and future. And has given you his resurrected life. He has no form of comeliness. And when we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by all men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and sorrow. And we hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and our sicknesses and carried our sorrows and pains. Yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten by God and afflicted. But remember, he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised and beaten for your iniquities. And the chastisement for your peace and my peace was laid upon him. And by his amazing, amazing stripes, we are healed. There's healing in Jesus. Restoration in Jesus. All we like sheep have gone astray. Jesus said, remember me. I'm the one that came after. and left the 99 and came after you, the one. We have turned everyone to his own way. Can you imagine that? God Almighty, loving, loving you and I, that we've all rejected Him in some way, form, or fashion. We all turned away to our own way, and the Lord, though, laid on Him the iniquity of us all, so that you could receive 
grace, abundance of grace, and the gift of righteousness. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. You know why? Because he gladly gave himself. He was led as a lamb. God's lamb. God's sinless, perfect, spotless lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shares, he was silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people, he was stricken. They made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor there was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord God to bruise him, to crush him. He was he has put him to grief. When you made his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant, shall justify many for he shall bear their iniquities see Jesus God Almighty wanted a big family he did it for you and I so today we're going to remember all that Jesus did Immeasurable. You think about it. Yes, He wants us to remember the sacrifice He made. But He definitely wants you to remember that He bought you. He did for you what you could never do for yourself. And by His stripes, you've been healed. Would you pray with me? Father God, we come before your table today justified with the body of Jesus. Just as though we have never sinned. And we declare this day that we're we're not sinners. For you made us new creations, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We've been justified, redeemed. And we're children of the Most High God. We thank you today, Lord Jesus, for giving us grace, freedom, and a new identity. We definitely remember you. So, Lord, I lay my hands upon these elements today that represent your body that was given. The sinless body of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of each and every one forever. Past, present, and future. It also represents that blood, that redeeming blood that washes and makes us white as snow. Lord, I sanctify and set apart these elements on this table today. We celebrate. We celebrate your life because You're not a dead God. You're the only living and true God, the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in your name we pray and bless these elements as we partake today as one body of believers in Jesus' name. Amen. Our deacons and elder will serve you today. And you just hold on to one of these little cups. It's got the unleavened bread. Y'all go ahead and serve our people. It's got all the elements in it. 
when we get ready to partake, you can go ahead. When you get yours, just peel that top layer back. There's a little cellophane, clear, whatever you call it on top. Just peel that back and you can take the wafer out. And we're all going to take as one body today. Such a wonderful day today. Such a beautiful day today. And looking at a bunch of beautiful folks today. So glad to see you all. And if you're here for the first time today, you're not here by accident. Let Jesus just capture your heart today and forever. Thank you, Brother Danny. <coughs> now, when you have time, if you'll all just peel back that first layer. And now, with all of us as one body, Let's raise it to the Lord right now. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ. we we'll wait on our brother. I'm sorry, Brother Bill. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ given for you and I. Let's take it together now as one body. Lord, we are grateful. We are thankful. You to do what we could never do for ourselves. We are grateful. Now, if you will, peel back the second layer carefully. The fruit of the vine that represents the blood of Jesus Christ for the healing of you and I, restoration for you and I, and the blood that washes away and makes us white as snow, you and I and for the entire world. Let's take it together as one body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, y'all get the way. Yeah, he's got one there. Our deacons will be around and serve you and take up those little cups. I'm excited today. Hallelujah. Resurrection Day. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Can our children, when you finish, can our children come forward this morning and meet right up here? And Bonnie, would you come? We got a little presentation for every child here this morning. We're going to dismiss you for Children's Church. So all you children and our children's pastors, would you come right now? All of our children. Boy, look at them. Look at them. I love them hairdos. 
Man, I'd do mine like that if it wasn't falling out. Come on, kiddos. Look at these children right now. Well, Sister Bonnie has a gift for all of you. Yeah, all of you children come. Don't be embarrassed. You come. Y'all going to have some fun this morning with these children's pastors. Y'all come on. And Sister Bonnie's got something she wants to pass out to every one of you. Yeah. Well, we wanted to get them some la- a lamb each this morning to remind them what this day is all about. It's about the Lamb. This day is about the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world. That's our gift to you today. Just remember, kiddos, that Jesus is the Lamb of God. But He's also the King of glory now. Amen? Now if we miss anybody, a little child, we want every child here to have one of these lambs today. Y'all come on, get you a lamb. Yeah. I think you've got enough. And I think there's one more coming right here with Jess. Two more? Do you got you have enough money? Wonderful. Wonderful. Now let's let's lift our hands toward these children this morning and bless them. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless our children today that they have a a, a wonderful revelation experience today about the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, that it took a lamb to bring out of that grave the King of glory. And we are thankful and grateful today for these children. And we bless them today in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Y'all go and have fun in Children's Church. Let's give them a hand today. i got one more thing to do. Let me give you the mic here. Which one of these is Hannah use? This one? Check. I've got one more presentation I want to do. <clears throat> would all you youths, would y'all come up here, please? <laughs> all of you youths, you with the youth, though, you come up here, okay? Pastor Daniel, will you come down here and make this presentation? You and Heather. Come on, Sister Heather. Okay, he can do it. Come on, Pastor. This is our youth pastor, Daniel Taylor. Would you give him a hand? He's a wonderful man of God. We also wanted to present to you and have your youth, the youth pastor present to you today also a lamb for you to keep and remind you of the price and the cost of the Lord Jesus Christ. He paid for you that sinless, spotless Lamb of God. Amen. Give her one. Amen. Let's give our youth a hand this morning. Amen. We're very proud of them. And now, did, do we have any youth that are visiting here? We want to give you one. Do we? Yeah, go, go pass, pass those out to the youth that are visiting here. Y'all can have a seat. Go ahead, my brother, when, when Daniel gets back up there. <clears throat> Where did he go? That's old Mike Nudge. You remember him from Bethel. <laughs> Thank you.
Dry the nails in my hands Laugh at me Where you stand Go ahead Say it isn't me The day will come When you will see Amen. Amen. I'm going to jump right into a scripture this morning. Let me say this first. Welcome everybody. And welcome to all of you that are watching this morning uh, via live Facebook. It's a wonderful day. Resurrection Day is a wonderful, wonderful day. How many of you believe that Jesus Christ is coming soon? Amen. Amen. And how many of you are ready to meet the Lord? 
Amen. Amen. <clears throat> you know, Paul said this, but I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren and sisters, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, somebody say, rose again. Rose again. Even so, God will bring with him those that sleep or have died in Jesus. So where are our loved ones at right now that has died in Jesus? Their spirit is with the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, where there's no more pain, no more sorrow. <clears throat> Listen to this. We who are living and remain until the Lord's coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are fallen asleep or who have died in the Lord. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Those dead bodies will rise because their spirits are in heaven with Jesus. And in a twinkling of an eye, you've got a glorified body. Hallelujah. Can somebody give the Lord a shout? And then those of us that are alive and remain shall be caught up or snatched up or the rapture of the Lord Jesus Christ caught up in the clouds to meet with the Lord in the air and we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. Amen. So the, the, the reason I wanted to read you that scripture this morning is because of what my brother Mike just sung. That Jesus is coming back, but are you ready? Are you absolutely rapture ready? Yeah. Somebody give him some praise in the house today. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I preach the word this morning, I want to make a, an announcement. <clears throat> this coming Sunday, the 11th of April at 3 p.m., we will all meet and all of you are invited to be there at the home of Brother Butch and Lee Benton's house at the stand. How many remember where the stand was held last year? Amen. We will all meet there at 3 p.m. sharp where we will celebrate the life of Brother Butch Benton. It would have been his heart's desire and is his wife Lee's desire. For us to hold the worship at the stand again. And we'll have the stand again in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In honor of our brother that's done gone on to be with the Lord. We'll have worship there. Uh, we're, we're praying that every minister that ministered there will be there. And we'll also speak briefly at that meeting. Uh, we'll have a time of praise and worship. Uh, also a time of preaching of the word, altar call, and also fellowship and food uh, to be served afterwards. Be plenty of room for everybody. And so, Sister Lee Benton would like to invite all of you. So we will not have any services here at Solid Rock next Sunday, but we will all meet over at the Benton home. Now, you look for these announcements. If you don't know how to get there, all you got to do is look on Solid Rock Church, the Facebook page. We'll have this posted with directions. And Lee told me last night to tell you all of you are welcome. You invite everybody and anybody that you want to bring to this event, especially those that maybe have lost their way, have fallen away from the Lord Jesus or have never been born of the, of the Spirit of God because that is their heart to see people saved because that is Jesus' heart. Amen? Amen. It's 3 o'clock next Sunday, the stand at Brother Butch and Lee Benton's home. God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. You know, I was praying about this two or three weeks ago. God, what do you want me to preach? On what is your word for the church on Resurrection Sunday morning? Good to see y'all too. It's good to see all you folks this morning. Hallelujah. And good to, good to see all of you. Amen. I could pick some of you out, but you would probably get upset and, and, and might get offended because I've read that 
what pastors shouldn't do, and I've probably done broke all of them rules. Amen? Because I'm just going to follow the Spirit, but I'm not going to try to embarrass you, but it's good to see all of you this morning, and some of you I hadn't seen in a while. You've made my day already. Amen. So I want you to receive this word this morning. Would you Would you pray with me, Father God, in Jesus' name? I pray, Father, for the anointing of Holy Spirit to, to ride on this word right now, that you would... Uh, penetrate every heart and soul that's here this morning. Lord God, to receive what you have done for us and given us that resurrection power in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So if I were to entitle this sermon this morning, uh, the Lord said, I want you to preach on resurrection power. Resurrection power. And first, in John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus was speaking to Martha after the death of, of, of his best friend, uh, Lazarus. And Jesus told Martha, he said this, and this is for you this morning. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. In other words, Jesus is saying, even though these bodies were not meant to live eternally, when they die, you're going to live. You're going to live. And so he says, anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Because the Spirit, the true person you are, goes back into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And verse 26 says, everyone who lives in me, lives in me. Can you say that? Lives in me. Lives in Jesus and believes in me will never die. Never die. You actually never die. And then he asked this question to Martha. Do you believe this, Martha? Do you believe this? It's a good question. You know, everything about the resurrection, of course, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. He still continues to raise people from the dead, especially those that are spiritual dead, for all that would receive him. Hallelujah. You see, my friends, we serve the God of the living, not, the, not a dead God. We serve the God of the living, not the dead. The difference in Jesus and false gods is resurrection power. Resurrection power. You see, false gods ain't and can't raise nobody. Now, that might not be proper English to you, but false gods ain't and can't and has never raised nobody. But God, somebody shout, but God. But God does and can, hallelujah, for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great I am, Yahweh, Jehovah God, Elohim Adonai, the rose of Sharon, the bright and morning star, the one and only God, the one that splits heaven wide open, the eastern sky, the one that commands heaven's army, the one true and living God has overcome death, hell, and the grave, the one that will shout and blow the trumpet of God and command with his voice, come forth in my name and the graves will explode that day and the dead in Christ will rise and receive a glorified body, one just like his, giving praise in the house. Hallelujah to the Lamb. You see, Jesus is truly alive. Yeah. He's truly alive. You know how I know and how you know He's not dead. He's truly alive and He's living on the inside of you. He is living. I pray today that you get a fresh new revelation that God Almighty is living on the inside of you and you stop thinking like I used to think for many, many years of my life that I'm not good enough. I don't measure up enough. That I've done so bad. That I've done so wrong. That, that I ain't this and I'm not that and what everybody has and I don't have. Listen to me. That's exactly why Jesus went to the cross of Calvary to give you what you didn't deserve. Hallelujah. And to give you the blessed in the blessed love to give you everything that he has because the Bible says as Jesus is so are you in this world and that you are seated with the Lord Jesus Christ and he's given you his power of resurrection in your life to live resurrection life in this life and also a guarantee of the Holy Ghost of God that will resurrect the remains of you if you die before he comes back <laughs> I love preaching the word. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, Jesus is alive. Amen. He is alive. The tomb's empty. Yeah. 
I've been there and I've seen it twice. The tomb is really empty. They ain't never found a body. Ever. Nobody has ever found a body. And I'm going to tell you, some people say, yeah, his disciples, they stole it away and they hid it somewhere, may have chopped it up and whatever. I'm going to tell you why that ain't so here in just a minute. You see, Jesus is alive. He sits at the right hand of God the Father. He commands heaven's army. He intercedes for you and I 24-7. He answers your prayers. He fills you with the Holy Ghost. He's given you, His followers, His grace, a brand new life, a new identity, authority over of the devil in the world and resurrection power. Resurrection power. I got resurrection power. Resurrection power. I don't fear the devil or the demonic or the world or what man can do to me because you can't kill somebody that's got resurrection power. Hallelujah. You see, no other religion in the world has ever had, nor does have a risen Savior. None. 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 See, Buddha's body was cremated and placed in several Buddhist monuments. He's not a risen Savior. Listen to this. And I'm not here against these people. These people just need to receive the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ because He loved them just as He loves you and I. Hinduism that was out without a single founder. There were many sages, many holy men. They died and their bodies are still in their graves. Not one risen Savior. Mohammed himself is buried in the mosque of the prophets in the city of Medina. He did not ascend to heaven. His body is there in Medina in Saudi Arabia today. But we have the risen Savior. And you know what the good news is? There are Muslims now that are beginning to see and being revealed God's presence in their life and thousands of Muslims and Hindus and Buddhists are coming to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Resurrection power. There were many men and women of God before us experienced resurrection power. One of them was Abraham, the father of our faith. He knew the certainty of the power of the resurrection. He even took his son Isaac atop Mount Moriah. In obedience to the call of God, he went there to sacrifice his son. His son, Isaac. Abraham knew without a shadow of a doubt that God would raise Isaac from the dead. Even then, God revealed to Abraham, I'm the God with resurrection power. Listen to this. Abraham knew in obedience to God because he was the man of faith and the father of our faith and to all nations. Hallelujah. Listen to what he said. This is mind-boggling to me. He goes in obedience with two of his servant boys. And he says in Genesis 22, 5, I want you two fellows to stay right here and hold on to my donkey. He told those servants that. He says, the boy and I, Isaac, we're going to travel a little farther and we're going up on Mount Moriah to worship. We'll worship and then we'll come right back. He said, we'll come right back. He didn't say, I'll come right back because right there on that mountain, God revealed to him resurrection power that even though if you obey me, God's got the power and he knew that God Almighty would raise his son from the dead just as he was going to raise his only begotten son from the dead from Mount Calvary to the grave to the sky Lord Jesus you reign on high you see Abraham not only believed in the great I am that was Jehovah Jireh the Lord God his provider because God that day this was the gospel being preached right there on Mount Moriah where the temple, the temple, the last temple of the Lord will be built in Jerusalem. Hallelujah. That was the place. That was the very structure of the place where Jesus ascended into heaven from the Mount of Olives that day. And he's coming back. He's coming back.
coming back, my friend. And when he touches down there at the Mount of Olives, he will speak to that eastern gate and say, Open in the, my name. And those dead bodies that are planted there are mostly Muslim bodies that's been planted there. And they too will rise at his name. Hallelujah. That is resurrection power. Job, how many remember the story of Job? Hallelujah. Amen. See, Job believed in the one true God in resurrection power. I want you to listen to what Job said about resurrection power. Job 19, 25 and 26, But as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives. (laughs) Job, way back yonder, Job Job. You know why Job was the richest man in the world? You know why God blessed him and blessed his socks off? Many many was the abundance of of the life that Job had. He was the richest man and most faithful man that God found on the face of the earth. You know why? Because he knew about resurrection power and that his Redeemer lives. But as for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and he will stand upon the earth at last. Job had a revelation. Hallelujah. And after my body, Job says, has decayed, yet in my body I'll see God. (laughs) He's talking about a glorified body. Even though this thing here that gets older and gets these old spots, liver spots on it like I got right here. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm proud to have them today. But bless God Almighty, I'm thankful that my glorified body ain't going to have these spots one day. Hallelujah. You ain't going to have those aches and pains one day. There ain't going to be no more sickness, no more pain, no more sorrow because resurrection power has given you now resurrection power, new life of God's plan and purpose in your life and you can live with joy today. Can somebody shout? Somebody shout today. (coughs) David, King David, he knew about the resurrection power of God. I want you to listen to what King David wrote in Psalms 49, 15. But as for me, but as for me, God will redeem my life. He will snatch me from the power of the grave. And then he says, Selah. Selah means let's have a praise break right now. Hallelujah. Let's have a praise break right now. He ain't going to leave you. If you believe that, let's have a praise break. I'm not kidding this morning. Let's have a praise break. He ain't going to leave you in no grave. Hallelujah. He ain't going to leave your mama, your daddy, your cousin, your brother, your sister. He ain't going to leave them in in the grave. Glory to God. Glory to God. He will snatch me from the power of the grave. You see, the resurrection of Jesus is the foundational power of mine and your faith. It's what seals our faith. The resurrection. Can you believe? You know, the resurrection. The resurrection is the reason and the foundation of our faith. And His resurrection power is within every one of you if you've been born of the Spirit of God. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead that day lives in you. And you may say, well, Pastor Benny, I don't know about that. I just don't, I don't know if I believe that or not. I don't feel that way. It ain't based on nothing about your feelings, my friend. It's based on the faith of God's Word. And faith is based on facts, not on some hope. Amen. It's absolutely the truth. Absolutely the truth. You see, we are serving and live a living Savior. He's living and alive. Living and alive. We're serving Him. Our God is not dead. He's alive. And He's living on the inside of you. No matter how you feel about yourself. If you, you could get happy today about who you are in Christ, you don't have to like or love who you used to be because who you used to be don't even exist anymore because of resurrection power. You see, my friends, just as Jesus said to the religious Pharisees, He said, hey, guys, you destroy this temple, and in three days, I'll raise it again. I love that. You know, He loved them just as much as He loved you and I. But how many know they didn't have nothing on Jesus? 
Absolutely. Religion will never have anything on Jesus. Amen. Uh, religion, they can't, religion, it, it, it's not just Buddha. It's not just Hinduism. It's, it's not just Islam. But religion can't raise anybody from the dead either. Amen. That's the truth. But Jesus spoke to religion of his day and says, you, in other words, crucify me and I'm going to raise this temple in three days. And these people that were supposed to know the law so well and know the prophecies of the Messiah, they thought he was talking about the building. We're not talking about a building today that holds the Spirit of God, even though God's Spirit resides here in this building. But we're talking about you and I that house the temple of God. Amen. And the same resurrection power. If someone doubts in Jesus' resurrection power, I want you to please listen carefully to a few. I want to share with you a few undisputed, undeniable truths today. And if that the empty tomb. <coughs> I don't like doing this. And I'm not sick. How many knows <coughs> that the... <coughs> That the pine trees is really giving off their blessing right now. You notice I didn't say it was a curse. I'm trying to be thankful in all things. Not for all things. I'm not thankful. Well, I should be thankful for the pollen because it has a good use. Or it wouldn't be there. But I bless God. Thank you, Lord, for the pollen. <clears throat> but I don't like what it does to me sometimes. So am I not unspiritual because I took a drink of water? <clears throat> the, at the empty tomb of Jesus, I want you to get this today. Are you listening? Can you hear me in the back? Hey, Brother Leroy, made my day, brother. Good to see you today. The Roman seal was broken at the tomb. Now, I know you've been told similar stories. And it's the truth. You can read it in the Bible. But I want to give you some facts with some Greek studies and researches. You see, consequences for breaking that seal. And why would they put a seal on Jesus' tomb? Because the apostles and the disciples believed that he would rise. He had told them, I'm going to rise from the dead. Well, how many knows that that would travel pretty fast on Facebook today? Even if you made that kind of claim. You know, uh, Pastor Benny said he was going to write, and I'm not Jesus, okay? But, I'm, I, I, but think about this. If all of a sudden you read that John Doe, whoever it is, or Sister Susie, states, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna ri to rise from the dead today. Well, first of all, she'd have to die. And then second of all, who would believe such a thing? But the story, I guarantee you, would spread like wildfire. Because I've seen a lot of stuff on Facebook that has spread like wildfire that should not have been on Facebook. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm getting a little personal on that. It's like it ain't none of your business, Pastor. Well, it may not be none of my business, but if it's not giving God glory, it ought not be on Facebook. Hallelujah. I said it. I said it. Hallelujah. Well, see, consequences for breaking that seal. Why would they put a seal on his tomb and not other people's tomb? You see, it would cost you your life. Rome would execute you. If that seal was broken, anybody that was around it would die if that seal was open. And there were not... See, the Bible talks about two and four guards being there uh, at, at, at guarding Jesus' tomb. But the actual facts about numbers here in the Bible, and I'm not refuting God's holy word, but when you study out numbers and what they mean, there could have been as the minimum of 16, 30, or 50 guards guarding his tomb. You read it out, you study it out in the Greek, and you're going to find that there's more than two or four. There's 16, 30, or 50 guards at that tomb. And listen to what happens now. In Matthew 28, 2, Suddenly there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord. Somebody say the angel of the Lord. 
the angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. <coughs> you talking about being slain in the spirit. This is slain in the angel. <coughs> you see, this was an extreme... I mean, you know, when I first read about this years ago... I envision, because I've been there, I've seen that tomb, and I envision the big stone that, you know, an angel came and he pushed on it in a little bit of effort, you know, and he rolled that thing back and Jesus came out. But let me tell you how it really happened. You see, this stone was very extremely large. It was large and it would take many, many, many men to remove it. But it was rolled away. See, Greek word studies define that it would take a tremendous amount of power to even budge that stone. But that stone, here's what it really means in the Greek. That stone was picked up by the angel of the Lord and cast away. One angel picked it up. It wasn't just push. There was no effort. He picked it up. He picked up the stone and cast it. He threw it away and then goes over and sets down on it in light. What do you think about that? <laughs> That's exactly what happened. And now he's got the attention of these soldiers and they all fall backwards. You see, the angel of the Lord showed up on the scene and cast that stone away and, 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 and he sat on it. it. And that's what it means when you read the Greek when it says rolled away. It's the Greek word galau, which means to remove completely by thrusting it, casting it. In other words, it was humanly impossible to have removed that stone without you having like a legion of people and the, and, and the, uh, the, the kind of equipment that they had to roll that stone over that tomb. <clears throat> but the angel of the Lord picked it up and cast it away. One angel. One angel. <clears throat> you know the Bible talks about heaven's armies? <clears throat> and one angel can do that? What do you think about when the armies of heaven comes riding with the king of glory? I think we're all, even the saved. You know, somebody told me a long time ago, brother, told me a long time ago, I'm going to be the first one to meet Jesus in the air. You know, I can't. Well, John, when he saw him in his glory, he fell as a dead man. I believe we're all going to be on our faces. I don't believe we'll be the ones hollering and screaming for the rocks to fall on us and hide us from the face of the one. Yes, it's going to be a joyous occasion, but I believe we're all going to be falling out that day at the power, at the power of the angelic forces and the king of glory riding on, the, on that white horse with a sword in his hand and fire in his eye. He's alive and he's coming back. Hallelujah. And what about resurrection power faith? What about that? See, when Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the apostle uh, Salome, the, the apostle John and Peter, they went into the tomb and they saw the grave clothes laying there in the form of their master's body that it would like, uh, look like uh, a shell of a cocoon. He just miraculously shed those clothes. There was something that happened there. Uh, uh, Lord God Almighty only knows, Holy Spirit only knows. How many knows that Holy Spirit is also resemblance of the power of God, the fire of God, and something began to burn inside of that body, and the power of God began to transform that body, just like a worm in a cocoon <coughs> that came out a glorified body, and Jesus rose then as a glorified body and came out of that tomb. He came out of there and he left only the garments and he left a, left a napkin that was wrapped around his face <coughs> and he folded it neatly and he put it at the head. Thank you, brother. He, he took that napkin and he laid it at the foot, at, at, at the head of that tomb of his. And you know what that napkin means without going into preaching that right there? That's another sermon in itself. But that napkin meant when you, when you, was in, you were in the Hebrew race, <coughs> if you ate at a Hebrew home, at a Jewish home, and when you had dinner, 
and you folded your napkin in a certain uh, way and left it at your table, you were saying, hey, I enjoyed the fellowship and I'll be back. Jesus folded that napkin and he put it right there at his head and it was a symbol to all of those that looked in that tomb and said, I'm alive and I'll be right back. Amen. I'm alive and I'll be right back. Glory to God. I'm alive and I'll be right back. I'm alive and I'll be right back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friends, if that wasn't enough evidence of the resurrection power, Jesus appeared to over 500 people after his resurrection. Did you realize that? Over, over 500. So we don't know if there's 1,000, 1,200, or 1,500, 2,000. It says over 500. The tomb is still empty. And get this, both Jewish and Roman sources ranging from historical Evidence from the book of Josephus during the life and times of Jesus all the way up to the 5th century writings testify of the resurrected Christ. There was no doubt that Jesus rose from the dead. And because of the resurrection body of Jesus, all doubts were gone from his apostles and disciples. They saw the evidence that Jesus is alive. They saw the scars in, from the nails and the piercings in his, in his feet, in his hands, and in his side. They were eyewitnesses and were willing to die and share the gospel. Why in the world, if anybody doubts in the resurrection of Jesus that he is God Almighty, why would any Anybody die for a dead false God that claimed to be a savior. But many died. Thousands upon thousands died preaching the gospel of Jesus because he rose from the dead. He's alive. He's alive. Now listen. <coughs> this is some facts. <coughs> Remember what I just said. Why would somebody die for a false God that, that never was resurrected and don't give any any support uh, or hope of resurrection life. And hope in the Hebrew means assured. It's, it's assured. It will happen. <coughs> but listen. <coughs> the Apostle Paul saw the Lord. And Paul was beheaded. He died for the gospel. Peter was crucified. Andrew was crucified. Thomas was pierced through with spears from four soldiers. This was the one that we call Doubting Thomas. But did you know the Bible don't say that? Matthew was stabbed to death. The tax collector that became a brand new person. A, a most hated person. He died because he saw the resurrected body. Matthias, you remember he's the one that took Judas's place? Matthias was burned alive at the stake. Because of preaching the gospel. Philip and Bartholomew were crucified. And Nathaniel. Nathaniel of all people. Was filleted alive. And preached the gospel. As that was happening to him. And then they finally killed him. By cutting his head off. To shut him up. Man what power. Of the resurrection. See my tomb. The, the, my friend the tomb is empty, and if your name is Tomb, then I just called you my friend. Anybody's name here today, Tomb? I get excited and get ahead of myself sometimes. The tomb is still empty. There's never been anyone to find any remains, any bones, any artifacts, because He ascended. He ascended from on high. Jesus is alive. The grave couldn't hold him and the devil couldn't stop him. <laughs> I want to say that again. The grave couldn't hold him and the devil couldn't stop him. So, you being the image of Jesus, the grave ain't going to hold you and the devil ain't going to stop you. So quit acting like it. Quit speaking negativity. Quit speaking curses over your life. It's, oh, pastor, pray for me. The devil's really on my case. Well, stand in your authority and put the devil to flight today. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Woo-wee. 
John 5 and 28, Jesus said this, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear my voice. And come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. You see, if you were saved and born again today, a follower of Jesus, you will live eternally forever in the presence of God Almighty Himself. For when you believed and trusted in Jesus, you were sealed of the Holy Spirit of God. And that's God's guarantee stamp on your life that you are eternally saved. Can somebody say amen? And if you're taking notes, that's in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14. You see, this means that the Holy Spirit sealed you, sealed me. And our loved ones that have gone on before us, He's God. The Holy Spirit is God's deposit. He's God's guarantee investment and God's title of ownership that possesses you. And when God possesses you, He will never lose you. You may fall and falter sometimes, but He won't. (laughs) You know? Even though sometimes when we're not faithful, he's always faithful. Am I, ta- am I preaching the word today? Amen. Well, his grace is able to keep you, my friend. Amen. Is that not a Savior worth loving and trusting and following? Amen. Well, we'll all be just like him, just as he is. When we see him as he is and those glorified bodies that our loved ones that's gone on before, or if we go on before, before the Lord returns... We'll receive a body just like His. What's that like? I think that it's a good time to share a little bit of that with you. After His resurrection, Jesus' body was glorified, but still in human form for His disciples recognized. I'm going to tell you, the glorified body is a body that you can touch, you can see, it eats. The body eats and enjoys eating. You remember Jesus sitting on the the, the coast of the Sea of Galilee and He's cooking fish. How many fishermen you got in here? Amen? Amen. Well, He's cooking fish. How many likes fish in here? Let me say that. There's a whole lot more hands. We need to have a fish fry, fishermen. Amen? Need to have some fellowship. Have a big fish fry with hush puppies and slaw, baked beans. Come on. Amen. Glory. Are you hearing that? I get an amen on that. Cooked outside in one of them big black pots. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, we don't want to talk about that chicken fry, do we? <clears throat> amen. That's another story for another time. You see, what does glorified body mean? Well, let me just tell you. Glorified body means honored, glorious, magnificent, The elevation of power, distinction of excellence, eternal, powerful, imperishable, pure, strong, undefiled, no sickness, no pain, no disease, no sorrow, perfection, bathed in the glory of God and the fellowship with Jesus Christ. That is glorified body. See, if you're saved, you got a home in heaven. And when you part this life, you'll live forever. And perfect existence. Also in perfect existence on a new earth one day. And enjoy that holy city of Jerusalem that's already prepared for you and I. A city four square. You've heard that? I often wondered how big is that city? If it means anything to you, I researched that out too. Can you believe a city that is paved with pure gold? That's gates are so huge and they're made of a single pearl. Where the Lamb of God is and He's the light for that city needs no light. And that city is 1,400 miles long, deep, and high. I believe it's big enough for all of God's people to rejoice and worship with the angels of God around the throne of God. Hallelujah. Can you give Him some praise? You see, we only get a glimpse of that. We find most of that in the book of Revelation explaining the city. But Paul put it, Paul could peer, he peered one time into the third heaven. And this is what he said that he saw. I hath not seen nor ear heard nor have entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love Him. In other words, Paul was saying, I don't have human words to describe it. But I know this. 
It'll take resurrection power to get there. You see, most of the sound of my voice who have lost a loved one, a mom, a dad, a spouse, a brother, sister, aunt, and uncle, well, if they were Christian followers of Jesus, you can count on seeing them again. They're already there in that city four square. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, we're confident, yes, well, please, rather to be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord. And the book of Ecclesiastes guarantees this in the process. How does this happen? The book of Ecclesiastes 12 verse 7 says that the dust, these bodies will return to dust, but the true person, their spirit will return to God and gave it. And you know what the victory is of resurrection power? We read about that in 1 Corinthians 15, 55. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Resurrection power! Jesus took the fear of death, see? He took it away for all of us and your loved ones. For precious in the sight of the Lord is the death to these bodies. Of the saints of God. Jesus is speaking to somebody in here today. And I'm sure somebody out there today watching. John 14, 1, he said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions or abodes. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you into myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And here's the question of the hour this morning. If the trumpet of God were to sound right now. You going to play? Come on and play, Riley. Very serious moment. I remember... And I'm sure it's okay for me to share this. I know over my lifetime that I've witnessed people giving their heart and life to Jesus Christ or those that rededicated their life. But I'll never forget just a few years ago that my sister-in-law, Jennifer Henderson, on an Easter Sunday morning, even before the altar call, gave her heart and life right here in this altar. Now, you're my family too. You're my spiritual family. But there's nothing like seeing some of your family, your loved ones, come to the Lord. And you know, she's never looked back. (laughs) You know what's amazing about resurrection power and how he saves? It's just like that Philippian jailer. The whole family gets saved when one gets saved. And after Jennifer got saved, then there was her children. And lastly, Bradley, my brother-in-law. Well... You're my spiritual family too. But maybe you're here this morning and you haven't experienced resurrection power. Maybe you lost your way. Maybe you're one of those prodigal sons or daughters. And let me tell you this, the Father, <clears throat> He's still waiting. He's not left you, never rejected you. and He's still waiting on you. What a morning. Easter morning, resurrection morning, with resurrection power, what a day to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ. Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, if any of you wants to be my follower, I'm talking to you this morning. If any of you wants to be my follower, Jesus is talking You must turn from your selfish ways. Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you're going to lose. You'll lose in this life. But if you give your life for my sake, you'll save it. 
And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world? Get everything you want. But yourself is lost or destroyed. You see, God loves you today. Right where you are. It's amazing to me how people that fall away. Because I used to be this way too. I'd fall away from God. And I'd go back and commit some of the same sins I used to. Feel so ashamed and guilty. And I'd think thoughts like this. One of these days, when I get my life right, I'm going to go back to church again. That's not resurrection power. That's actually the enemy lying to you. Because Jesus comes to give you resurrection power right where you are. Would you stand to your feet today? And you that are watching live by Facebook, would you stand in the presence of God today? Or either kneel, because we're going to have an altar call right now. First, the altar call is this. That if you have lost your way, if you've truly been born of the Spirit of God, and you know that, you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, maybe many years ago, or maybe recently, and you fell right back into the same old paths that you used to live. If you meant it with all your heart and you made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you're still a new creation in Christ. You just need to have your mind renewed by the way that you think about who you are in Christ and know your true identity. So first and foremost, the altar is open this morning as Riley's playing. If you want to rededicate your life on resurrection morning, right now is the time to come. You don't, All you need to do is listen to your heart and listen to the Holy Spirit that just says, Come to me. I've been waiting. Come to me right now. Don't be ashamed. You come right now and rededicate your life to God. I did in 1997 when I had fall, fallen so far and deep in sin for seven long years. <clears throat> and on April 28, 1997, I bowed for the first time at my bed in seven years. And I said this prayer, Father, forgive me. And I got up out of that floor and I knew I was clean. He washed me, made me white as snow, just like I'd never sinned. And if you've never been born of the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is knocking on your heart's door this morning. Why don't you open up? And be born of the Spirit of God. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. What a day. What a day on Resurrection Sunday morning. See, the Bible says if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Make Him Lord and Savior of your life this day. What a day. To receive resurrection power. Would you come as Riley's playing right now? Come on. Don't put him off any longer. Or if you've got a decision to make today, you've just not surrendered your whole life to God. You're just doing your own thing. And you know God's been knocking on your door for a long time. That He's got better for you. Your life's not over. You've got a plan and purpose that you haven't lived and you never get too old. I'm telling you, you never get too old to receive it and live it. And if that's you, do you want to surrender that today? Do you want to lay that at the feet of Jesus today and really begin to experience life? And not just do your own thing, but to really live for Christ and begin to enjoy resurrection power. Would you come right now? Would you come? Was my cross you bore? Amen. So Come on. I could live in the freedom. Would there be anyone else? And now my life is yours, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is
is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. shame is gone I stand amazed in your love undeniable your grace goes on and on and I will sing of your goodness forevermore worthy is your name You deserve the praise Worthy is your name Worthy is your name Jesus You deserve the praise Worthy is your name Sing that chorus again. Worthy is your name, Jesus. Right. Let's worship him as we you close deserve out. the praise. Deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus. You deserve the praise. God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I know it's your will that none would perish, but all would come to resurrection power in eternal life. All would come to salvation because you've certainly paid the price. Lord, you've given yourself to mankind, your ultimate creation, so that they can be your image and be your sons and daughters. I pray for those, Lord God, out there that may be watching today that don't know you in the free pardon of sin. I pray that they make it you their choice this day, Lord Jesus, to be their Lord and Savior. They begin to know that they're blessed and received in the beloved, and that's you, Lord Jesus. And Father, I pray for that resurrection power. God would become a reality in their lives, and that their families, too, will be saved and united in relationship with you. In Jesus' holy name. Now, would you raise your hands for your blessing today? And the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord God lift up His countenance upon you. Give you His eternal peace that surpasses all understanding. Let Jesus Christ, the Messiah, rule and reign in your hearts and in your lives. In Jesus Christ's name, I bless you. Amen and amen. You're dismissed. Sing that again as they go.